got First Samuel 14, just say, we've got it. Reading now, verse 1 and 2. You now it came to pass on a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bear his armor, come and let's go over to the Philistines' garrison that on the other side he told not his father. Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree. I just want you to get that focused in your mind. Keep reading just a little further. We're going to go now to verse 22. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> verse, I'm sorry, verse 23. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, This is the guy under the pomegranate tree. He's a carnal jerk. He's anointed but not appointed. He's been chosen but not involved. His ignorant carcass has been under a pomegranate tree while everybody else has busted their hide trying to get something done. And that jerk wakes up with a church program. Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening that I may be avenged on mine enemies, so none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in the honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened, and then answered one of the people and said, My father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father's troubled the land. See, I pray you how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. I'm just going to keep you a few minutes and I want to talk on uh, just a little taste of honey. Is all you need. Just a little taste of honey is all you really need. Father, Everybody else has had their chance at bat, and here I am. And uh, I, I know I'm here by divine appointment. I know it's no accident, and I know that I'm supposed to say this. I'm asking for an anointing and a freedom and a liberty. I don't need to preach my guts out and try to slug my way through a bunch of stairs and critics and tired people. I'm asking you for just a few minutes, would you light the place up? Would you somehow just plug me in just for a few minutes? That somehow people could get some direction to go home with. People could get a real understanding of what's taking place and what's going to take place. I'll praise you and I'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. God bless you and you may be seated. <clears throat> Just a little taste of honey. We have been in a life-changing conference. We've been impacted by the greatest singing and what I think is some of the greatest praising and worshiping God and most fantastic preaching I've ever heard. My mind is boggled. My computer's blown a circuit. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. You can act like a hypocrite and say, oh, I got it all. But you'll lie about other stuff. 
This stuff has taken us way beyond. I think the Lord's trying to take us beyond ourselves anyway. I just want you to understand when I start, where I start. Verse 23, so the Lord saved Israel that day. Now get this word. And the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. That's where we are right now. Last hour, last moment, this conference. God is ordained. From this moment on, we go to the next level. The battle passed over to Beth Haven. We fought the battle on this level with all our stuff and all our neat, lift, nifty things. But now God is saying, okay, that's all you're going to battle for this day. I'm going to take you to a new level. I'm going to, I'm going to take you to a new place. I'm going to do some stuff for you. I didn't do for you up to this point. If you're willing to go with me. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I just don't, I, I'd like to have you with me, but if you don't, I'll go by myself. The problem that we have is that God's ways, according to Isaiah 55, are contrary to our ways. God's ways are contrary to society, to life itself. We sing and shout and boogaloo and bang into the walls and hang from the roof. We laugh and applaud and celebrate only after the victory. No team celebrates till they've won the game. No politician throws the party until they've won the election. You're not, you're not hearing me. You, you're not hearing me. Mm -mm. The fans don't go crazy. Until the Super Bowl is over. The investor doesn't pop the cork and drive himself half loony getting bombed until he's made a lot of money. God, you see, we got a problem. Because God says, that's the way the world does it. Here's the way I want you to do it. I want you to get excited before you win. I, hey! I want you to act like I'm really telling you the truth, that nothing's able to separate you from the love of God, that greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. I want you to act like you believe I told you the truth before it comes to pass. You're not getting it. Could I have a scripture, Reverend Mangan, Anthony, sir, Reverend Michael? Uh, Numbers 21 would be a good start. Numbers 21, verse 16. Anyone's good. I'm going to preach the whole thing anyway. we got to get, get a little understanding here. And I don't mean to be unkind and I don't want to be misread. I'm the most misunderstand slob in the whole movement. But I'm trying to be honest. This is a grand operation. Most of us ain't got it. I know that the devil's trying to frustrate us over two situations, and two situations only. Failure and the unfinished. You can give yourself acid indigestion over the incomplete. You can get undone over the undone. You can walk out of this place and go home to your little assembly or middle-sized assembly and you can get so frustrated when you begin to study what ain't right, what ain't fixed, what ain't done, what needs to be done. God says, why don't you give a party over the partial? Why don't you get excited over a little bit of progress? Why don't you dance a little while over a few things that are right? You can get sidetracked. Over what's not right. I know I'm telling the truth. I'll only be a few minutes. Would you read for me, Reverend Michael? I will. And from thence they went to Beir, that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses. Now watch this. Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Now watch. God always gives you a promise before you have the performance. It's, it's, you know, God will mess with your theology. He'll give you an excedrin headache. You see, God doesn't deal with us like we want Him to. We ask for a harvest and He gives you an acorn. All right. 
We're wanting a vineyard full of grapes and he gives you one seed. You're not hearing me. We want the end result and God gives you this little bitty something and says just take this promise and act on this promise because the harvest is in the promise. The harvest is in the promise. We want God to give us a wonder. But God says, no, I'll just give you a word. But I read where the word of the king is. There's power. You don't need to feel nothing. You need to believe something. But I feel like making a mess right about now. Read for me, Reverend William, sir. Then Israel sang this song. Stop. God said, I'm going to give you water. Promise. Go sit on your duff and wait for the performance. Not Israel. They said, we got a promise. Let's sing. And they sang unto what they couldn't see, couldn't taste, couldn't locate. They sang to the desert floor, and the desert floor gave them an answer. you got to sing the promise of God in the face of difficulty and what looks like an impossible situation. And you will release the power of God to fulfill His own Word. Oh, yeah, just sit down just a we got to be out of here in a minute. Read. Read, read for me, Rev. Spring up, oh well. No, 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 Reverend Michael. That's why God messes with us. Because we're image conscious. You look kind of dumb in the desert talking to the sand. Anybody besides me ever sang in the shower or the mirror? And then all of a sudden somebody caught you? Ever been walking in the mall and talk to yourself? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. You're okay until someone catches you. And you go, they're looking at you. You go, hey. We want to protect our image. We want God to show up so we look good. I'm telling you, God's fixing to take this assembly to a level where we don't look good. And we're not worried about looking good. We're worried about Jesus looking good. Because if we lose our self-image, He'll give us the God image. And if God steps on the scene, He'll get the praise, and nobody will know our name. Just bear with me just a minute. I'll find you. I'll get to my sermon in a second. Read for me, Reverend Michael. Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. Now, can you imagine... You know, you know who did that? Did you, can you read the first verse again? The 16th verse? Did you read that? And from thence they went to Beir. Now watch. That is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, gather the people together, and I will give them water. I, I got a promise. Now watch this. Read. Then Israel sang this song. Yes. Spring up, O well, <laughs> sing ye unto it. Say, say look at God of John. You don't hear me yet. Singing unto a place where a promise should occur. Read the next verse. The princes, that's all I wanted. Hey, leaders. The princes you're, dig you, the you, well. You, you want your people to boogaloo and talk in tongues and shout, and you sit up here like a stone? You want all your people to do all this stuff? And you sit up here checking on your socks and see how your shirt looks? The Bible said the leaders of the, the nation, did the, the princes way. did it. The leadership did it. If your leader can't preach, don't damn him and condemn him. Pray for him till he can preach. If your preacher doesn't worship, don't vote him out. Pray for him till he worships. Because you can't get any higher than your leadership. You need to ask God to give you spiritual leadership. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake everybody up all at one time. Just bear with me. Finish verse 18, Rev. The nobles of the people digged it, 
<laughs> by the direction of the lawgiver with their stain. Whoa. Now the lawgiver was Moses. Now, 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 now the preacher told them to take their lips and their sticks. And said, go out in the desert and look down. We want Jericho to fall, but we want to be, be the, the finest looking parade in the city. Them cats walking around that city look dumb. They went around every day, no noise except those screeching, ugly ram horns. Now, we, now if we'd have put the parade on, we'd have had bugles, trumpets, saxophones, and silver horns. God says, no, no, I want you to just put the crude in the front so no flesh glories. And after the ram's horns comes the glory of God. If you're willing to look bad, the glory will come right behind you. But if you... God said, I will not share my glory with anybody or anything. You've got to be willing to look bad so that God looks good. I need one more scripture, Reverend. 54 of Isaiah. Am I, am I doing okay? I, well, I really want to do good. I don't want to do okay. Just, just, just bear with me just a minute. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not used to crowds. I'm going to put my hat on a minute. What verse, sir? Uh, one would be good. I found it. Thank you. Go ahead, hurry up and read before I quote it. Sing, O Baron. Stop. I don't need to preach no more if you get this one point. God said, I don't want the big church to sing. I don't want the talented and the gifted to sing. I don't want the successful to sing. I want the people that have not experienced reproduction to sing. I want somebody that's hungry to sing. I want somebody that's disappointed to sing. I want somebody that's yearning for something supernatural. I want them to sing before it happens. Come on, Baron! You got a word from the Lord. He said, let the barren sing. A few more minutes, okay. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Keep reading. Sing, O barren. Thou that didst not bear. What? You that haven't grown. Break forth in this thing. You that haven't grown. You whose church has not multiplied to the level and degree that you desire it? Don't get frustrated over the unfinished. Sing! Don't sit in the corner and suck your thumb, commit spiritual suicide because some nincompoop quit your church. Sing! I didn't say let the blessed sing. I said let the barren sing. Let those who have not yet given birth to what they're hungry for, let them sing by faith. Oh, God, am I making sense yet? Please be seated. Thank you, Brother Williams. Uh, just keep reading. Just You're going to go down to verse 3, and then I'm going to put my hat on. Break forth in the singing and cry aloud. Now, break forth in the singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child. God knows you ain't given birth yet to what you're hungry for. But he says that's no excuse to sit silent. You got no right to sit there with your hands folded and your legs crossed and say, well, the mangan's got all the breaks. He ain't got no breaks. That's a lie like this ice cream parlor's in hell. The kingdom of God is hard work. The kingdom of God is steadfastness. You gotta do it when you don't feel like doing it. You gotta sing when you don't feel like singing. You gotta sacrifice when you don't feel like sacrificing. Thou that didst not travail, get noisy! Because if you start to sing and you start to bless God, God is going to fulfill His promise. You'll be seated. I'm sorry. Why don't you sit down a little bit? For more 
Yeah. Are the children of the desolate. Now, wait a minute. The only way you can have more of the children of the desolate if the desolate stop having desolate mentality. Well, I'm going I'm to have a rated X right now. Ready? Everybody repeat with me. I got a promise. But I'm not pregnant. But I'm going to praise anyway. I got a promise. I'm not pregnant yet. But I'm going to praise anyway. Because if I praise God, I'm going to get pregnant. I'm not talking about physical pregnancy. I'm talking about pregnant with faith. And pregnant with results. And pregnant with the answer. And pregnant with revival. And pregnant with growth. If you praise God, you get pregnant with a promise. Please, please be seated. So, you see, if you hear all this great preaching we've heard, Okay? And all that promise comes to you, and you don't praise God over it because it's not real in your local church yet. And you sit on your duff, and you wait till it's all right. You know you can get so frustrated at preaching in empty chairs. Am I the only guy that ever calculates on the platform? Well, I wonder where she is. They're not here today. That one's gone. And she said, yeah, they're not here. That's... And I overlook a few hundred wonderful people that said, we're here. And start to become suicidal because the tithing is down. Wait a minute. The tithing may be down, but I do have some people paying tithes. What am I going to feed up on them folks just because some ninnies have gone home somewhere and got their feelings hurt over something? You're not hearing me. You may be driving a lousy car. It's better than a bike. You may not understand all the truth, but thank God you're not in false doctrine. You're not in a cult. You may not be able to explain a lot of stuff, but you can experience stuff that you can't explain. Oh, my. Please be seated. I'm so... I'm sorry, brother. Michael. For more are the children of the desolate yeah, here we go. than the children of the married wife, yeah. saith the Lord. Right. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Now watch what the Lord said. Act like it's going to be. He said, I gave you promise. Now put out some chairs. Pray for rain. Carry an umbrella. Yeah, 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 you're not getting it? The glow of this moment and this, this conference will be over in about 15, 20 minutes. It'll be over. And you'll go home to the real world. That's right. And the guitar that's got two strings broke and Sister Sue that don't like to play, so she plays out of tune. The Bible said when there's no vision, the people perish. you got to have a vision. you got to understand something. That a vision is the womb of the mind. If you don't see it, it ain't going to be it. Now listen to me. you got to envision it before it happens, and then you have to act like God is working on it right now, even though you don't see the results. If you are faithful to the Word and faithful to the principles of the harvest, God will keep His Word. Am I making sense? I'm trying to help you. Please, please be seated. Just a few more minutes and we'll go. Keep reading, Reverend. Stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Everybody said expand. Spare not. Go ahead. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stake. Now watch this. Next For one. thou shalt break forth on the right hand wow. and on the left hand. Did you hear what he said? He said, now what? I'll give you a promise. And I'll tell you now, 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 let the barons sing. Let them stretch forth. Let make preparation. For thou shalt break forth. But the break forth doesn't come till after the barons sing. You see, we, we have a problem. We can receive promises and then get frustrated and suicidal over fulfillment. The Lord says, here's the way I play my game, boys. You magnify before I manifest. You praise prior to performance. 
You exalt before you experience escape. Yeah, it was Jehoshaphat that got a promise. And they went out blessing and magnifying God in the face of the problem. We know the story. And the answer came because they blessed God in the face of a problem. You, you know, the only reason we had an Act 16 earthquake with Paul and Silas is because they took time to praise God over the partial victory of a demon-possessed lady getting it cast out. They didn't praise God over a campaign that was successful. They didn't build any church during that day that they were there. They just took time to praise God over a momentary victory. And God shook up the whole jail. If you and I don't learn to praise God for every little beautiful partial victory... We will live in frustration of the total fulfillment, and we'll never see it. Okay. Let me, let me try it one more time. You don't remember anything else I said, boys. Look at old Jeffy. Hell is after your faith. Ain't after your money. No, it ain't. After your faith. It's after your faith. Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon. Satan has desired thee, that he might sift thee as wheat. Watch. But I pray for thee that thy, not your flesh. Listen, you, I know your flesh is going to mess up. In a few minutes, you're going to cut some cat's ear off. You're going to swear like a sailor, and you're going to curse up and down, and you don't know me. I know your flesh is going to fail. I didn't pray for your flesh. I prayed for your faith. Because if you've got your faith in place, it doesn't matter how many times your flesh fails, your faith will pick you back up. Your faith will give you a resurrection. Your faith will help you to pray. Your faith will get you out of the pig pen. If your faith, that's why the devil's after your faith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's going to frustrate you over your failures. Oh, yes. I'm going to frustrate you over your failures. But he's really going to try to frustrate you over the unfinished. Now, I'm not telling you, I'm trying to build a church. I'm trying to build a church so long. I think my bricks out there got mold. Almost three and a half years trying to build a still ain't got the slab finished. Called home today and I only got a little section left on a slab to be finished. We start putting the steel up and I called Brother Heidel and said, Is the slab finished? Hell. Rain, <laughs> storm, thunder, demons. <laughs> Dudes have a pass key to my motel room. <laughs> I hung the phone up, felt my face just get red, my ears starting to tingle. I'm about ready to say some Christian cuss words. So t- Hi, Mom. I'm so ticked off. I'm just so furious. Everybody else builds their church. Old Rexy Dale buys property, builds up, but here's almost got it filled up again. Makes me so mad. This guy buys property, builds a building. This guy buys, but I buy property, and moles take over. And interest rates go up. And I've only got another 100 foot to get the slab poured, and I'll be finished. Hung the phone up. I said, you dirty wretch. And finally I just said, well, you lying though. Jesus, let the, let the barons say. What over got, got me a party hat? It ain't like I want it. But it ain't going to stay that way forever. The Lord is going to help me. you got to take time to praise Him over the partial. The whole slab's not done, but i got three quarters of it done. I ain't got everything fixed I want to. But thinking how far I've come, I'm going to throw myself a party. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, I'm not going to let the unfinished 
frustrate my faith. Do you hear me, devil? Delay it another week. You could be in hell maybe before I build it, but you ain't coming out of hell. But I am coming out of here. Hey, you folks that are worried about what's not finished, why don't you take inventory? Has God done anything for you? Have you made any progress? Has anything happened that is good? I want a few more minutes. Please. Please. Pastor, I'm going to whole box of but I, I thought you guys might have been too starchy. Oh, I know I'm just a slob, but I'm a happy slob. I know I'm just crazy, but I ain't got no image to protect, my friend. I was a hell-raising, honky-tonking, drunken fool. And God found me and brought me out of the pit and put me into the kingdom. I've got nothing but praise for Him. I'm not everything I want to be, but I'm a lot better off than I used to be. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I just cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. You got to learn to praise Him over every little victory. And don't let the big issues hold you hostage. You can be seated. You can be seated one more minute. Am I out of my mind or what? You think I'm going to let this steal my victory and rape my faith? Not on the coldest day in hell, Brother Barnes. Disappointed about the slab? Yes. Aggravated about the steal? Yes. But at least I own the property. And the crane's on its way. And we'll live to pour another day. And if I don't build it next week, I did talk in tongues today. I did touch the throne today. He loves me with an undying love today. I think I'm just going to throw myself a party over a little bit. Okay, a few more, a few more minutes and I'll be done. Send this video around the world. At least I'm putting my hot air in something that's making noise for Jesus. What are you putting your hot air in? You you be seated. I know I'm supposed to finish. Just got started here. Oh, glory. You see, God, you got to hear me. We were the last night's team. You can't lose with the stuff we use. Hey, Brother Keys, Paul said, I think myself happy. Sometimes you just got to think yourself happy because life won't make you happy. Situations won't work like you want. You just got to think yourself happy. Let me just say a few more things and you can go home. You're so sweet. You see, you see, God is a God of seed. See, we're a people of sensation. God is a God of seed. 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 I need help. He gives you a word. We need to build a church. He gives you a promise. Don't frustrate the grace of God waiting for the check that's supposed to be coming in the mail. That's a bunch of TV puke. The check's in the mail. What in the world? God, the toilet fixer and the plumber and the roofer and pay your bills and buy your groceries? When did he become everybody's bellboy? Would you serve God if he didn't fix it? God doesn't work for us. We work for him. Just, just bear with me, just a minute. Brother Michael, would you be so sweet? One more time, I'm trying to get to the sermon. Would you, would you go to 1 Samuel 14, Reverend? And I'll just try to say something here. You see, now I, I got this idea. I, I got enough scriptures here to preach for three nights. Listen, 
Six times in the book of Genesis, six times, God did something and stopped and threw himself a party. Not you. No, no, your whole plan ain't finished. You just suck your thumb. But God turned around and said, let there be light. And there was light. Next verse. And he saw the light and it was good. Now, he hasn't created animals. He ain't got birds. He ain't got fishies. He hasn't got vegetation. But God looked at one little aspect and said, for a day, that's pretty good. You're not hearing me. God's plan wasn't fulfilled. It wasn't completed. But God took time after every little improvement to look at it and say, now, that's good. If you don't learn to say it's good after a minor situation, you'll be held hostage waiting for the major to happen. So you sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm. What verb? He said, wait a minute. Then he turned around and said, divide darkness. Separate the water from the land. Now the next time he starts labeling stuff. That's why a lot of people don't want a real move of God because he'll label stuff. He'll say, this don't belong here and that belongs over there and that needs to get out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get quiet now. And God looked at him and said, now that's good. And he said, now let the seas bring forth the fish. And when they did, he said, now that's good. He did it six times. He wasn't held hostage by the incompletion of his totality of plan. He took time after the partial to praise himself. And then finally in the last verse, I think it's about verse 31 in Genesis 1, he looked at everything that he had made and said, Now that's very good. And I wonder how many of us are are, are not giving God honor and praise because we won't do anything until it's very good. Well, I'm going to just say it like I'm going to just say Hey, listen to me. We're so hung up on the totality and the complete picture that we don't have the attitude that God has. Watch this. Jesus said, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that what? He ain't saved. He ain't born again. He's not water baptized. He ain't got the Holy Ghost. But heaven says, that's pretty good. He's in better shape than he was. He's closer to the throne than he was. He hasn't become everything I want. But heaven gets happy over an incomplete operation. And well, you're just, 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 well, do whatever you want. Just, And we got sinners and visitors and precious people that come to our churches. Now watch. They'll sit there and slobber and snot and boo-hoo and cry. But if they don't go to the altar and hit them a hook them a hooky for a half hour or jump in the baptismal tank, we ain't happy. But something tells me heaven's moving through the auditorium saying, I'm happy over that. They're feeling conviction. I'm happy over that. They're reconstructing their attitude. Oh, I wish we could get happy about the stuff that makes heaven happy. Instead of always having to say, how many got the Holy Ghost? How many got baptized? I know that's the full picture. But you mean you can't get happy over the old dirt bag that visited your church? Well, they didn't make a move. How do you know they didn't make a move? You ain't got no idea what's been going on inside their mind, their spirit, their heart. They might be this, they might be this close to making the biggest move you ever understood about. Can I have a few more minutes and we'll finish? Okay, just, just, just bear with me. I gotta, I gotta get to this honey mist. Okay, read for me, Reverend Mike. Oh, 23 be good. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. Read on. 
And the men of Israel to sit in a church on the leadership that only wants to protect its image. Don't give a flip about the fatigued fighters, the weary warriors. I don't want nobody rejoicing and nobody getting refreshed till I get my image vindicated. Well, I think I just struck fire. They were tired, Brother White Mike, but they were distressed over Saul because Saul been sleeping under a tree and wakes up with a program. Nobody till I get my plan totally done. There's nobody eat that I may be avenged on my enemy. Right. So none of the people tasted any food. Yeah, read. And all they of the land came to a wood. Yeah. And there was honey upon the ground. Yeah. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped. He didn't have to find it. Grace put it at your feet. You didn't hear me. The honey was a gift of grace that God provided for people who had been in the battle. He wanted them to be refreshed because they have a new battle to go to. You get it now? Come on, everybody said the honey dropped. Yeah, that, you know what that means? You didn't have to climb up a tree to get it. God understood how weary you were and told them bees, drop it. And they put it within the reach of anybody. Of course, it was on the ground. That means you'd have to humble yourself and bend down. I'm almost done. But no man put his hand to his mouth. Read on, Reverend. For the people feared the oath. Terrible thing to fall behind leadership that's carnal and out of tune with God. That's horrendous. I, I, I take my hat off to everybody in the Apostolic Pentecostal Church who sits in a lousy church. I do. I take my hat off to you. Got, you got better courage than me. I wouldn't tolerate it. I'm not going to let that dirtbag drive me to hell. Not in the coldest day in hell. He ain't taking me to hell because he's going to hell. You're not hearing me. You think I'm trying to be offensive. I'm not. I'm trying to awaken you to understand that you are trying to get too many miles out of one tank of gas. Some of us get the Holy Ghost and then we don't talk in tongues for enough 20 years. God never intended us to go from battle to battle to battle to battle without refreshing in between it. That's why we need good church services. That's why we need a move of God. That's why we need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's why we need good music and good preaching and good praise so we can get refreshed. Can I have about five minutes and I'll finish? Five minutes and I'll finish. I ain't touched the bottom of this thing yet. Read for me, Reverend. But Jonathan heard not. Oh, 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 oh. When his father had charged the people with the oath. Jonathan didn't hear it. Sometimes it's a blessing to be deaf to dumb people. Now, I know you think that's humorous, but I'll tell you what. Have you ever noticed how we always pick the same seats to sit in at church? Because it's safe. Nothing happens there. I wouldn't sit next to some morons for all the tea in China. You think I'm going to sit on a platform or out in the audience next to some bimbo who's telling about who went to bed with who and who split whose church and who stole the money and what happened at the World Series and who won the Super Bowl? You're out of your mind, pal. I've got more things to do than that. I'm going to sit next to somebody who's going to praise God. I'm going to sit next to somebody who's going to build up my faith. I'm going to sit next to somebody who 
who's excited about what's going on in the kingdom. Okay, I'm down to my last five minutes. I gotta go. Read, read, read for me, Rev. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb. Yeah. And put his hand to his mouth and, and his eyes were in light. Word from the Lord. The next series of revelations that comes to the Pentecostals will only come to those who have been battling. Not floating, not sitting, not coasting. Battling. The Bible says he put the honey in his mouth and his eyes were enlightened. Or he was refreshed and got fresh revelation for the next level. Didn't get it? Didn't get it? You see, if you don't praise over the partial and you don't rejoice over momentary victories, you can't experience the release for the rest. You see, you fight, you get through it, you battle, win or lose, you struggle. Now, God says, here's grace, here's honey. Isn't it beautiful that while they're busting their hides, fighting, God's got bees making honey for them. The bees do work for God, you know. He can tell them where to put the honey. He said, I got some boys out here going to be coming in the forest in a few minutes. I want you to drop that honey where they can get to it because they got more battles to fight. But if you're under any kind of leadership or a personal concept that you're so macho, so strong, so spiritual, that you don't need to take time to taste the honey, you're not going to have revelation inside a refreshing strength for the next series of events that you face. The Lord did say, give us this day our daily bread. Or, give me today what I need for today. Okay, I've, I've, I've lost you. Okay. Finish reading, Michael, and I'm going home. Go ahead. Then answered one of the people and said, There's always someone Thy there. father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Yeah. 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 Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day, and the people were faint. I would never sit next to someone who tried to stare me down. I wish you wouldn't make so much noise. You're so loud. You see, people who are not fighting do not understand the depth of desperation of those who have been in the battle. Two minutes. My, my landing gear's down. Hold on. Read for me, Reverend. Then said Jonathan, then Jonathan My said, father my has father troubled, the, troubled land. the land. See, I pray you. Look, look how, what happened to me. How my eyes time. have been enlightened. I took time because to see I the tasted. reward of grace. Because I tasted just a, a little honey. A little honey. Not a whole bunch, just a little. You, you, you know, you're not getting this yet. See, I'm out of time. If you read the rest of this scripture, if the Reverend reads the rest of it, he ate the honey, he got refreshed, rejuvenated, he got fresh illumination, enlightenment. He's ready to go to the next battle, right? right. But the whole company fears old Bimbo, who's been sleeping under the, the tree in Gibeah. Yeah. Now watch. If you don't satisfy your craving and your appetite with the honey that grace has provided, you will satisfy it with the forbidden. Because the Bible says they ate the animals with the blood and committed great trespass and sin against the Lord. If you don't let grace satisfy your drive, your energy, you're, you're moving in your spirit. You are going to satisfy that drive immorally, ungodly, and illegally. Just sit there. Just sit there. Don't break out the sweat. Don't get excited. Don't make any noise. 
Just, just let hell put you in its, just its cocoon. But I've been fighting. Don't tell me to be quiet. You haven't fought my devils. You haven't dealt with my lust. You haven't dealt with my feelings and my emotions. You don't know about my fears. Don't tell me to be quiet. I need the honey. Just stand up and stand up with me. I'm sorry I didn't preach better. I should have preached better, but I just didn't preach better. I'm so sorry. Just just bear with me a second. I, I called a man yesterday from the motel. His name is Gibson. For you know, any of you that think everybody's always lying. He's in the phone directory. He is a beekeeper in Tioga. He is also some type of Christian man, very gracious. I talked to him and asked him questions about the bees, and he answered me scripture and verse, scripture and verse, scripture and verse. I said, wait, I want an answer from a beekeeper. I'm the preacher. Now watch this. This is amazing. I said, I want to know something. These bees... What exactly happens? He said, well, the bee leaves the hive, and he goes looking for nectar. He picks up nectar, and he also picks up pollen. And he flies back. He said within six to seven miles, they will fly in one direction to find the nectar and the pollen. Now, this is neat. And he flies back to the hive. I like it. He lands loaded. Too many of you come in with too light a load around here. And he comes in to the hive. Now, this is so neat. He says, and the bee processes the nectar and the pollen into honey. Now, wait, I looked, I said, wait a minute. Nectar, nasty, pollen, problem. Go through the nasty, go through the problems, bring the problems and the nasty and the pressures back to the hive, and through worship and praise, process it into honey. You know what the man told me, Reverend? This is neat. A bee cannot Make honey alone. That takes care of all these rednecks and renegades who don't need the church. You're not getting what this conference is about. We've come from all walks of life, all cultures, all geographic locations. And we brought into this place the nectar and the pollen, the pressure, the pain, the problem, the fear, the anxiety. But when we get together to start buzzing around here, start praising around here, through the praising and the worshiping, we can process the pain into honey. I wish somebody helped me make a little honey right now. I wish somebody start buzzing around here. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt you with a commercial. One more statement the man told me. I asked him, I said, I said, who do the bees make the honey for, Mr. Gibson? Do bees make the honey for themselves? That's what the gentleman told me. He says, well, not really. Watch this. They process the nectar and the pollen into honey for their offspring. In other words, if you'll process your pain and your problems and your situations, you can feed the next generation. I said, you mean bees don't eat honey? He said, oh yes, they do. They will eat the honey that they've packed into the honeycomb only if during a long, hard winter there is no other food. They will then break into the cells and energize themselves through the hard times with the stuff they processed. What am I saying? 
I'm saying Samson killed the lion. That was a moment of victory. But God turned the moment into something that refreshed him down the road. Because he went back and found the honey in the carcass, and he got refreshed again from a victory in the past. If you get some stuff under your belt, you'll never know when God might let you dip back into the honey, and it be your salvation! My, 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 my. My, oh. I'm done. Reverend, last point, and I'm giving you the mic. Wait a minute. You know what he told me? I wish I'd have thought of this, but I'm not that smart. That's why I called the man. He said, Reverend, you might want to tell the people this. A bee has to process seven pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I said, Now, God, what's the man telling me? And I felt like, I'm not sure, felt like the Lord gave me an illustration and said, you'll have to go through seven times as much pain and problem to be able to produce a stable structure called a church. Because the honeycomb, he said, costs ten times more than the honey. Because it takes seven times more to make the honeycomb structure. A church like this doesn't just 